I moved to Mexico, giving you a sneak peek into the lives of Americans and Canadians who live in Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. Hola, hola, I'm Diani Leal, and this channel is brought to you by Diani Might Investment Realty, based out of Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. I've been working on this buyer's guide to help guide any of my clients through purchasing a property in Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. And a lot of questions have come up about what people know, what people don't know, and how I can answer your questions about this particular topic. So I've decided to do a little series of YouTube videos that will help guide you through this process and also answer some of the most common questions. So first of all, the most common question I think I ever get, and this is a first and foremost from people that are foreigners to Mexico, non-Mexican citizens who are considering making a purchase of whether it be an investment property, a retirement home, vacation home, are just you know sitting at home in Canada, in the States, in wherever in the world, and thinking, you know, is this even a possibility for me? So that would be the first question that I really want to address. Can foreigners purchase property in Mexico? So this is a really good question, and it's not really a yes or no answer. And so that can be a little bit confusing and off-putting to people, but really it is relatively a straightforward process. So anywhere from 50 kilometers inland from the coast and 100 kilometers from the international borders is the restricted zone of Mexico. Any land that falls directly within this restricted zone is not available for direct purchase from foreigners who are not citizens of Mexico. And it doesn't matter if you have a permanent residency, that still does not make you eligible for a direct purchase for property within this particular zone. So this is what we're going to talk about because we are specifically talking about Puerto Vallarta. Although there are other areas of Mexico that don't fall within the restricted zone, this is the part that I cover because I am a real estate agent in Puerto Vallarta. So if you are interested in purchasing property in Puerto Vallarta specifically and surrounding areas, you do want to be aware of the details of this restricted zone. So in order to purchase property in the restricted zone, you need a trust, otherwise known as a fideicomiso, which is trust in Spanish. So the trust has three parts to it. The trustee, which is the bank, is the institution with the direct domain of the property. The beneficiary is the person who will use and have possession of the property, who is the buyer. And the settler is a Mexican company or individual who is responsible for transferring the property to the buyer, also known as the seller, of course. But this may lead to the question, what if the seller also has a trust? What if it's one foreigner who's purchasing property from another foreigner? So in this situation, you as the buyer, who is a foreigner and purchasing through a trust, has two options. One of those options is to extinguish the existing trust that is connected with the property that you would like to purchase and create a new one that's just for you. And another option would be to assume the existing trust through an assignment of rights. Just keep in mind, if you choose this option, it does need to be renewed every 50 years, so you want to check and see exactly when your renewal date is going to be as the clock starts from the time the trust was created, not from the time you assumed the rights. However, you will save $1,000 if you choose this option, so this is going to be the one I'll probably recommend to you as it's the quickest and also the most cost efficient. So another question that comes to mind when discussing the trust is, the question and concern if the bank is the owner of the property or you are the owner of the property. After all, you're paying for it and you want to be the owner. So just to clarify this particular point, the bank maintains the trust separate from the rest of its assets and has absolutely no legal rights to your trust. You call the shots. So when you decide it's time to sell, you sell. And you also are expected to pay to maintain the trust on an annual basis. So the fee that you're going to be expected to pay, it ranges anywhere from 400 to 500 US dollars a year plus tax. A lot of times Mexican nationals who are purchasing property uh, in Puerto Vallarta will choose to utilize a trust as well. 
just to ensure that that purchase is protected and organized through that legal agreement. And also, of course, it makes it easier to pass down to your beneficiaries. So this brings me to my next point, which is if you are the beneficiary as the buyer of the trust, then can you designate beneficiaries to inherit your property in the case of your death? So yes, you can actually designate as many substitute beneficiaries as you'd like, and each one can inherit a certain percentage of the property. You can even change these people later, but the deed will then need to be modified. So, and there's a certain cost to that. So, you know, you do want to choose, of course, people wisely, but any changes can be made at your discretion. You're in full legal control of the property. So another common question is, do I have to be physically present for the close? This is fairly common because the chances are if you're a foreigner, you live in a different country, you have a whole life over there and closing dates are oftentimes selected very last minute and it can be a little bit of a burden to automatically drop everything and travel to Puerto Vallarta just to sign a document. Of course, if you can make it, it's going to be faster and more efficient and a little bit easier for you. However, you of course have the option of designating a power of attorney to temporarily assume the responsibility legally to sign the deed for you. And then that responsibility is extinguished as soon as the deed is signed and the property is delivered to you. You can designate really anybody you would like to be your power of attorney who's physically present in Puerto Vallarta, Mexico at the time of the signing. Uh, a lot of times people will use their real estate agent unless they have friends or family members that are living in the area and would, wouldn't mind and would be able to accept that responsibility of stepping in and signing the deed on their behalf. One thing to keep in mind is if you are going to create a power of attorney, that that document will need to be apostled. The apostle process is pretty straightforward in the United States. It's quick and it's easy and most major cities especially have a areas where you can just go and get any document apostled. An apostle is basically an international notary. So the document that is notarized with a specific apostle stamp can actually be recognized in the country that you need it to be recognized in. An apostle isn't necessarily valid in every country in the world, but any country that has signed the apostle treaty, which I believe there are about 118 countries, these countries all recognize an apostle. The United States has been a member of this apostle treaty for quite a while, so that's why the process in the U.S. is pretty straightforward. However, Canada was newer to sign on to this treaty, so the apostle process in Canada takes a little bit longer as kind of it starts to become more established. So this could delay your closing a bit if you are a Canadian citizen looking to purchase and you don't think you can be physically present. It's really important that you notify your real estate agent as soon as possible so they can make sure to notify the attorney and the closing team and everything can be arranged accordingly and an accurate date determined. So this pretty much covers the details of the trust specifically. There are, are a lot of rumors that can often be circulating about foreigners owning property in Mexico. I would really disregard a lot of those rumors unless you're sure that they're true. Recently, a client of mine asked me if it's true that foreigners can't make any changes to the outside of their house. And of course, I let her know that really that's just a matter of HOA restrictions if you're in a gated community or a condominium complex and the condominium re regime and the bylaws will determine the kind of changes that you're able to make to the exterior of your house or your apartment building, not your immigration status. So please don't hesitate to reach out to me anytime about any questions that you might have. You can find me easily in the contact information that is included in the description of this video or on the bio of my page. And also make sure to download my buyer's guide, which has this information and a whole lot more about the property purchasing process. <laughs> it's a little bit of a tongue twister there in Puerto Vallarta. So make sure to download that. That's at my stand store link right there in the description to this video. And feel free to reach out anytime. Please, if you like the content, give me a like. Those are really helpful. And also, please subscribe if you haven't yet. Thank you so much for tuning in. And also, don't forget to leave comments with any sort of questions about future videos, topics that you would like to be featured, or you know, questions that you still have about this particular topic.
Till next time.